Motorola changed the cheap smartphone game in 2013 when they debuted the Moto G for 179 bucks. Now that was available unlocked and at the time that meant only working on AT&T and T-Mobile here in the US. We're now looking at the 4th generation Moto G which has increased in price but does it still deliver an amazing value for its price or does the Moto G disappoint? Hey everyone this is Alex from Android Hellings and let's check out the Moto G4 in our full video review. Now the Moto G4 keeps the Motorola tradition even though it's owned by Lenovo now and the name Motorola is actually gone. The device is available through Moto Maker, allowing you to customize the back of the device as well as the front accents and add an engraving to the Moto G4. Not to mention you'll also be able to choose the storage that you get and if you want to go with the G4 Plus or not. Now when it comes to the build quality of the Moto G4, it's actually really good. Now don't get me wrong, we are still looking at a plastic build here on the Moto G4, even with the frame. That does look to be metal, but it's not. Now Lenovo did something here that many flagship smartphones don't do, and that's adding some grip to the back of the device. Now if you look at the Galaxy S7, the HTC 10, the LG G5, and many other smartphones that cost around 500 bucks or more, they are extremely slippery. And what that means is that it's gonna fall out of your hand at some point in time, and you're gonna have a shattered screen, a scratched the back, maybe even a dented phone. So it's nice that the Moto G4 is nice and grippy. The back here is removable on the Moto G4, which means you'll be able to swap it out for another color if you don't like the color that you picked when you bought the phone. Now beneath the back you'll find that micro SD card slot along with the micro SIM card slot. Now since many smartphones these days use a nano SIM card, Lenovo was nice enough to include a SIM adapter in the Moto G4, allowing you to use your nano SIM card in the micro SIM card slot without much of an issue. Now when it comes to networks, the Moto G4 works on all four of the US networks. So that means Verizon, Sprint, AT&T, and T-Mobile. All you need to do is simply put in your SIM card into the device and you're good to go. Now during the review process, we used both Verizon and T-Mobile SIM cards in the device. And we didn't even need to reboot the device to switch networks, making a great unlocked smartphone to pick up no matter what network you are on. Now Lenovo has put the volume rocker and power button on the right hand side of the device here, with the power button being a bit rigid. Now this is great because you'll be able to tell which button is which without actually having to look at the phone, especially good when you're using it at night or in the dark. Now the top houses the 3.5mm headphone jack, so luckily they did not get rid of the headphone jack like they did with the Moto Z and Moto Z4s. And the bottom of the device houses the micro USB port. Again they stuck with micro USB while the Moto Z and Moto Z4s have gone to USB Type-C. Now the back side houses that 13 megapixel camera with dual LED flash and the famous Motorola dimple. There's no fingerprint sensor here on the Moto G4. That that's reserved for the Moto G4 Plus. Now the display finally got upgraded here on the Moto G4. We went from a 720p panel on previous models to a 1080p panel here on the Moto G4. Unfortunately it's not AMOLED, it's still IPS, but it's still a pretty great display at me, especially considering you're paying 199 bucks for this smartphone. Now it's not a perfect display, but it's adequate enough to do the job. When using adaptive brightness, the display can get very, very dim. I'd say almost too dim. That's great for when you're using it at night and such like that, but you know, during the day it can still get a little too dim when you're outside in sunlight and stuff and have to adjust the uh, brightness yourself, which kind of takes away from adaptive brightness. The colors do look pretty accurate, although we would have definitely preferred to have an AMOLED panel here. The IPS panel does its job pretty well. Now under the hood of the Moto G4 here, we have the Snapdragon 617 running the show. That's paired with two gigabytes of RAM. Now on some scales that looks definitely mid-range and others it looks mid-range with a hint of low end because of the 2GB of RAM. However, we are happy to report that performance isn't really an issue here. Now the Snapdragon 617 is, most of you probably know, it's the newer version of the Snapdragon 615. In fact, many of the applications that we've run on the uh, Moto G4 think that this is running the Snapdragon 615 and not the 617. And as you probably know, the 615 had quite a few heating issues. And they still exist. Although we didn't really notice them unless we're playing Pokemon Go for extended periods of time or using Android Auto for navigation and such. But in other day-to-day -day usage, you know, using Instagram, Twitter, Snapchat, all that good stuff, the Moto G4 didn't really get all that warm. 
and even when it did, the processor didn't slow down at all. A bit surprising given all of the thermal throttling that the Snapdragon 810 and 615 had last year. Battery life has always been a strong point for the Moto G lineup, and with the Moto G4, that continued. We got over 24 hours of usage, which included both Wi-Fi and 4G LTE on the T-Mobile network, with over 5 hours on screen time. And yes, that even included playing some Pokemon Go. As you can see in the images here, Pokemon Go was one of the most resource intensive apps used during that battery cycle. We continually got similar results as we continue to use the Moto G4. That's pretty impressive considering that it is only a 3000 mAh battery that's inside. Now the Snapdragon 617 does support quick charge from Qualcomm. While the Nova doesn't explicitly say that the Moto G4 supports quick charge 3.0, it actually does. Now we used the Quick Charge 3.0 charger to charge up the uh, Moto G4 and it went from around 10% to 100% in about an hour and a half. Now that's pretty much the same speed that we get with the OG G5 which has a slightly smaller battery around 2800 mAh, so not bad at all. Now one of the big questions in regards to Lenovo buying Motorola was about the software. Lenovo uses a pretty heavy skin on their own smartphones, but they have opted to let Motorola keep their stock Android approach with their 2016 smartphones. The Moto G4 sports stock Android 6.0.1 Marshmallow, and it runs really well on the device. Our only real complaint about the software here is the fact that it's running a pretty old security patch. As of our review, it was running the May 1st, 2016 security patch, which is already two months old, and the Moto G4 just launched a few days ago. Aside of stock Android, we do have a few features here for the Moto G4, which are part of the Moto app within the device. Moto's display is here on the Moto G4, which you can pick up your Moto G4 and the screen will show you what notifications you may have missed. As usual, this can be turned on or off based on the app and can be turned off completely. Lenovo has also included a slew of Moto actions here, which include the popular double twist to launch the camera and chop to launch the flashlight, as well as a few others. Now the camera here on the Moto G4 is a 13 megapixel sensor. It's not the best camera sensor out there, but like the display here, it does the job quite well. Now, the interface of the Moto G4 camera looks to be pretty plain, but it is packed with all kinds of features. Although the most important feature is likely the manual mode, allowing you to ju adjust just about everything and get the perfect picture. As you can see in the video now, the pictures from the Moto G4 are actually quite good. Now it's not going to be up the Galaxy S7 or the HTC 10 or any of the other flagships that you pay about three times the price for. but when it comes to smartphones in this class, that means around 200, 250 bucks. It's probably the best one out there. The Moto G4 is available for 199 bucks, although that gets you the 16 gigabyte storage model. For $30 more, you can double the storage to 32 gigabytes. Now, don't forget that the Moto G4 does have a micro SD card slot, and it does support adaptable storage. We used a 128 gigabyte SD card in there, and it worked just fine with adaptable storage. So, for most people, storage is not going to be an issue here. Now we have links down below in the description box for you to pick up the Moto G4. It's definitely a great phone to pick up, and that's even for power users. Now if you haven't read our written review, that'll be linked down below as well. And if you like this video, make sure to like it and subscribe if you haven't already. And we'll see you in the next one.